Hello and welcome to Lunch and Learn. My name is Kathy Lusowski and I'm the part cardiopulmonary rehab and clinical wellness manager at the summit. Today we're going to talk a little bit about sleep and tips to set yourself up for a great night's sleep. We all know that sleep is essential to our health. It's important in cell regeneration, mental health, brain function and memory and concentration. It's clear that lack of sleep can also cause us to be very irritable, anger, angry, stressed, frustrated, and the list goes on. Below is a link for a two minute video regarding the importance of sleep. Feel free to watch it on your own. Sleep hygiene is a buzzword, a buzz concept these days. It basically means habits, creating a set of habits that are supportive to help you have a really good night's sleep. Some problems with sleep, some insomnia, is caused because we have bad habits that we have cultivated over years and maybe even decades. So with that in mind, symptoms of poor sleep hygiene include people who may have a hard time falling asleep. Maybe they fall asleep just fine, but they wake up and can't get back to sleep. Maybe once, maybe multiple times in a night. Being sleepy at night and also a lack of consistency in the way a sleep schedule looks like. Sleep disorders Sleep disorders are something that aren't necessarily hygiene related. Truly, they are physiological conditions that need to be treated by a physician. So if you have serious insomnia or a medical condition called obstructive sleep apnea, you'll need to be diagnosed by a physician or see a physician in order to get the proper treatment. So here are some tips that can help. Think about your day and your routine during the day. If you have a routine that helps support your circadian rhythm, it really helps you go to sleep at night. For example, if you get up around the same time each day, you do some exercise, get outside and get some natural light. Natural light is really important for our circadian rhythm. Stretching, moving energy through your body. Stretching is a big part of that and really avoiding naps that are greater than 30 minutes. Greater than 30 minutes naps can trick your body into thinking that it's rested and then it doesn't want to go to sleep at night. Consider your evening routine. What are some of the things that are part of your evening that may impede your sleep? You can try cutting down on caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, and food consumption later in the evening. These wake up certain areas of our body and really make it difficult to sleep. Brain energizing activities such as watching the news or a really scary show or maybe doing you know like Sudoku or um, playing video games that can be really difficult um, to quiet the mind back down before going to sleep. Paying bills that can be stressful. Bed you know if if you're in bed and you're um, paying your bills in your bed and you're eating in your bed and you're watching your TV in your bed and you're, you know, whatever in your bed, um, it, it just, it's not necessarily associated with sleep. So the tendency may be to consider doing other things other than sleep. So keeping your bed for sleep. Sometimes having animals in your bed can be, um, can be difficult with sleep. And for those of us who love our, our, our pet babies, um, that's, that might be a hard ask. So just consider how their presence affects your sleep and avoiding stressful discussions before bed. These are all very, very um, face value and probably very intuitive for most of us. But when you look at your habits and your routines, you may find that you fall into some of these categories. Now, when you're going to bed, actually. So we have morning or daytime routine, evening routine, and this discussing the bedtime routine is a really great way to circle your mind into a place that it drives the energy level down, drives the mental acuity down into a relaxing space for sleep.
So tips for this uh, bedtime routine include trying to go to bed at the same time each night or roughly the same time, similar to getting up at the same time. It really feeds into this equality of the circadian rhythm that you have in your body for yourself. The routine that you do before bed is also just as important. Whether it's that you take a bath or a shower, um, maybe you always brush your teeth, um, maybe you always let the dog out, come back in. So just letting your mind know, hey, this is the routine that I go through before I go to sleep and it's regular and it's predictable and it's my wind down. It allows your brain to just anchor into that. Try uh, 20 minutes of a calming activity after you get in bed or right before you get in bed, whether it's reading, relaxing to music, maybe doing a guided body scan or a progressive muscle relaxation or meditation. This can really help wind everything down into that space so that you can drop into sleep very easily and quickly. So the other, another piece of that, of that is your environment. Creating a sleep sanctuary can be really helpful to produce that environment that is conducive to sleep. So having a really tidy room, um, having a really comfortable bed, pillows, the sheets you use, the air in your room. Um, cooler is known to be better, around 65 degrees uh, is what the literature says having a little bit of fresh air in the room, so maybe a little bit of a, an opening in the window, making sure that it's quiet. So if it's not quiet, maybe wearing earplugs or some white nose, noise, <laughs> white noise. Uh, calming scents can be helpful as well. Scents can also be um, something that produce allergies in some people, so knowing your body and what scents work well for you is important create maybe through a diffuser or something like that. Uh, dark or having very dim lights and really, really unplugging. Unplugging, but also if possible, removing the electronic devices from your room. Your television, your phone, your iPad, your computer, the internet, just keeping your bedroom, your sleep sanctuary so that the tenants or the um, impulse to get up, roll over and pull your phone up and look at what's going on in the world can't be an option for you. It means you have to get up and go to another room. So hopefully if, if you have all of that stuff away from your bed, that won't happen and you'll just sleep. There are tons of apps and videos and um, podcasts and things like that can be helpful, that can be helpful for sleep as well. There are some um, apps for uh, meditation, which also have sleep, uh, sleep meditations. Several of them are, and I don't work for any of these and I don't get a kickback from any of them and I'm not trying to sell anything. So with that said, that disclosure, um, some of them that I have used, that I have all three of them on my, on my phone, which um, tells you right now that I have my phone by my bed. So I, I don't always practice what I preach, but I do essentially at night use um, my phone for meditation. And um, so Calm is one of them, Headspace is another one, Insight Timer is another one. Um, those are great resources and they are all free. Uh, they also have a paid version that gives you a leg up on resource access, but it's um, something you can try. And then if you don't like it, it's no, there's no money out of your pocket. Like I said, YouTube videos, audios, podcasts, um, Yoga Nidra is also a really great um, centering, relaxing way to go to sleep. So knowing what works for you is the key to getting it started. With that said, I hope that you have very sweet dreams and, and that some of these um, practices can become a part of your habit. Thank you very much.